In this Adobe Captivate video, you'll learn the difference between video and synchronized video. Okay, let's get started here. So I have Adobe Captivate 9 running on my screen right now. Uh, but before we get started, let's, uh, let's take a moment to kind of explain the two different types of videos that you can use in Adobe Captivate 9. First off, there's event video. Uh, event video is a video that runs independently from the Adobe Captivate project and gives users independent control of all the playback controls. Uh, event video would be ideal when you need to give users the ability to rewind or replay a video, perhaps as part of a learning activity like a search and learn, where users need to find information within the video. Because event video is not synchronized with the project, you cannot synchronize items within the course to coincide with events within the video. For example, you could not include closed captioning that runs in time with narration within the event video. The other type of video that's available to you is synchronized video. In Adobe Captivate, it's labeled as uh, multi-slide synchronized video, but it's synchronized video nonetheless. It's a video that runs in sync with your Adobe Captivate project and the controls of the course control the playback of the video. If you want to give users control of the playback, users will have to use the Adobe Captivate play bar controls. As the name suggests, synchronized video can align with other items in the Adobe Captivate timeline, and you can add closed captioning to synchronized videos. Synchronized videos can also be spread, as the name suggests, across multiple slides, and that's, of course, why they actually call it that. But this is not a requirement. You can use synchronized video on just a single slide if you want to. So let's take a look at how you add either event video or synchronized video to your Adobe Captivate project. The first thing you need to do is click on the media drop down icon and that will display all the options for media for you and you can select video and this will bring up the insert video window and you can see your choices are at the top. So you have to ask yourself do I want an event video, in other words, something that's not synchronized with the project, or do I need this video to follow with other items within the course or to be synchronized with other items in the course, in which case you would choose multi-slide synchronized video. Uh, let's start off with event video. So the next thing you need to ask yourself is where are these video files located? Well, if your intention is to embed them within the actual course itself, they're probably somewhere on your computer right now. So you can simply browse to that location. If the videos are going to reside on a Adobe Media Streaming server or perhaps a Flash Media server, you need to provide the URL in this box down here. In this case, I'll find something that we can use right off of my computer as an example. Um, here's a video that I shot recently on a vacation, and we can just click on OK. Now, of course, this video is a little large, so I'll just resize that so it is in line with the scaling of this project. And you can see with event videos, the video itself comes with controls right on the actual uh, interface itself, and you can, of course, uh, change these to any number of skins that are available to you. Uh, my favorite, of course, when I use event video, which is actually rare, is to use Halo Skin 3. And that's a good choice because it gives your user as much controls as they could possibly need. When you visit an event video like this within a, an Adobe Captivate project, you have a choice as the designer to have the video autoplay or not. Uh, in the case of the example I gave before where you, where you might be doing a search and learn where the user has to find information within the video, maybe to answer some questions, uh, you might want to relinquish control to them entirely and let them play when they're ready to proceed. Um, if that's not the case, of course, you can certainly check off auto play and the video will start once they enter this particular slide. 
Let me get rid of this for a moment. And let's insert a different type of video, the multi-slide synchronized video. Again, the, the, the choice is very similar. Uh, in this case here, um, I'm going to choose the file that's located on my hard drive. But if I decide that perhaps maybe I'm not going to store this particular video embedded within the course, I could change it to streaming or Adobe Media Streaming Service. And then again, simply provide the URL as required. So I'm going to leave this progressive download for now. We've selected the, the file from my vacation here. And there's a couple of other choices with multi-slide uh, multi synchronized video. Because it is synchronized with the course, I can also, or alternatively, have it appear at the top of my table of contents. This is ideal if you have, let's say, an instructor who's providing narration through video that's going to synchronize with objects that appear uh, within the actual slide window itself. You know, perhaps um, information that's going to be pertinent to the course. And of course, the instructor will be off to the side providing the lecture. That's not the case in this particular instance, so I'll leave it for stage. And again, as I mentioned already, you can modify the slide duration to accommodate the video, which of course makes sense. Otherwise, if you have a three and a half minute video and the slide's only two minutes long, you'll only see two minutes of the video. Alternatively, if you've got four or five slides or you want to give the user the ability to jump ahead, let's say one minute at a time, you could have four or five one minute slides and then have that video distribute across all of those slides. Again, in this case, I've just got the single video and I just want people to play it. So I can just select modify slide duration to accommodate the length of the video and click on OK. Like before, this video is kind of large, so I'll just uh, resize that to fit this particular box here. Of course, if I wanted to make sure my aspect ratio was properly intact, I would hold down the shift key as well. So there's my video. You'll notice, of course, with, uh, with synchronized video, there are no controls for the user. Again, because the user would use the regular project navigation controls to control the playback of the video. One option, of course, that's available is your ability to add closed captioning, and that's done through the edit video timing uh, window. And if you just select the closed captioning tab, you can add closed captioning for this particular uh, segment of the video and have additional lines of text appear at different points along the timeline there. And that would synchronize, of course, with the, the narration within the video. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, the two types of videos that you can insert into Adobe Captivate. Guys, if you like the videos I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.